Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your second part video on JavaScript functions. In this video, we're going to go in a little bit more depth on how things are passed to functions, as well as a little bit more on callback functions and asynchronous callbacks. So that's what this video is about. But before we get into all that, I just encourage you to check out our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? Dev Mountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real-world applications and get a job in the industry through Dev Mountain's career-centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, Dev Mountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. All right, so now that we talked a little bit about functions in the previous video, you have a pretty good understanding of how they work and what they are at the fundamental level. Now, when I said we passed an argument to a parameter, I said that the value gets copied to that parameter, and that is how things work in JavaScript. So I think we had something like this, where we had a parameter here, and then we had the function body, and then we called the function or invoked it and passed in some value or some variable. Let's say we're passing in a variable. So we declare a variable x, and then we pass it into the square function like so. Well, what's going to happen is the value of x is going to get copied into this variable here. So it might look something like this. Here we have the x variable containing the value five, and then we have another x variable, and this five gets copied into that variable. So what that means is any changes to this variable inside of this function do not persist outside of the function. So if we change x inside of the square function, and then we use x down here, the value of x is still going to be five. That's because the value's copied, so if we change this, well, the original one stays the same. Now things get a little bit funky when we're working with objects or complex types. So what do I mean by complex types? Well, the opposite of the primitive simple types. So if you're working with any data that's of a primitive data type, you can look up all the JavaScript primitives. Those are going to be copied into the parameter values and we're not going to see any changes on the outside of the function. But when we're working with something such as an object, it works a little bit different. And the reason why is because of this. Let's say we create a variable x, but this time we assign it an object. And here is just an empty object, but you could put stuff in this object. Well, what's actually going to be stored in this variable is a reference to where this object is in memory. So think of it as if it's pointing to some object in, uh, in, in your computer's memory. Well now, when we pass this x's value to this x's value, this one here, the thing that is passed is the value of that reference. And that's where things get a little bit confusing. So whatever the value of this is, the location of that object is copied here, and it also points to that same object. So now, if we change that object inside of this function, it's going to be visible outside of the function because they both point to the same area of memory, the same object. And there's a lot of confusion about this because there's not very super clear terms and different languages have different ways of doing this. So for example, other languages will say pass by value versus pass by reference or value types versus reference types. So in JavaScript, the way it works is that everything is passed by value. So the value is copied from the argument to the parameter. It just so happens though that sometimes that value is a reference. And that's where the line gets a little gray on it, whether it's passed by value or passed by reference. Technically it's passed by value, but if we're working with a type such as an object, a type that is not a primitive, well then the actual value itself is a reference to wherever that is in memory and we can change the values of it inside of the function. So we can go in here and modify that object. Now the exception to this is we can't actually create a new object and assign it to this one and have this one affected because this is what would really be happening. We would be taking this arrow and no longer be pointing it to the old object, we'd be pointing it to a new one so it'd look like something like this. So now these are pointing to two separate things and this one stays unchanged. So this is the argument, and this is the parameter. So the only time the changes to a particular variable inside of a function can be visible outside of that function 
is if we don't reassign it to a new object and we just change that object. So if this was an object, we could change some of the properties. Let's say it was a person, we could change that person's name or we could change some of the, the variables inside of that object. But if we actually point it to a new object, that connection is now severed and these point to two separate entities. So changing this one is not going to also change this one back here. And hopefully throughout the next videos, we'll go through some examples and this will become crystal clear. So if you need to basically conclude this and just need to understand how this works is anytime you're passing an argument to a parameter, if you are reassigning it, the connection becomes broken and the changes will not persist outside of the function. If you are instead modifying, those changes will exist outside of the function. This concept even applies for primitives. So for example, if we have a, an argument here, let's say it's x and let's say we're working with integers and then we have the parameter here and let's say we pass in that value five over here and we change it over here to 10. Well, we're actually not modifying the value we're reassigning it a different value of 10. So anytime there's a reassignment, the, the changes are not persisted over in the argument side. Same thing with objects. If we change the object to a new object, those changes will not persist to the argument. So let's just go through an example here. We have this function func and it takes one argument. So it has one parameter here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say x dot name as the value Sally. And then we have an object literal here, so we're creating an object, and it has one property, name, Caleb, and then what we'll do is we're gonna call this function, and we're going to pass in me. So here's what happens step by step. We create that variable. The variable's name is changed to Sally, so this name here is also going to be changed because they point to the same object. So down here, me.name is going to contain the value Sally, not Caleb. But if instead we did this, and reassigned X to a new object, and we made a property on this name equal to Sally, this is not going to exist down here, so me.name down here is still going to be Caleb. All right, so that was a lot of information. Hopefully that really cleared up how things are passed inside of JavaScript. It can be confusing, so what I recommend is just to create a function, start passing information into it, change things, and see if after the function call they persist or if they do not persist. Be a really good way to practice some of this material, and I hope to go over some of that in the upcoming videos.